best way to study abroad. Guys, you don't need to worry about finding information on studying abroad. AECC will provide all the information you need. AECC has been helping students from all around the world to realize their dreams of studying abroad and has industry partnerships and local know-how to help you get set up with things like banking, insurance, accommodation, and more. Picture yourself learning in a country where history, culture, and innovation intertwine. Make a move to the United Kingdom. Home to four of the top 10 universities in the world, the UK offers an unparalleled educational experience. The UK is also a gateway to exciting job opportunities, with many graduates going on to work for top global companies. And it's not just about the books. With a diverse student population from over 200 different countries, you'll be part of a vibrant community. But we understand, studying abroad is a big decision. It's exciting, but it can also be daunting. That's where AECC comes in. We're here to guide you through every step of your journey. From choosing the right course and university, to visa processing and pre-departure guidance, we offer end-to-end -end services, all for free. So, are you ready to take the leap? Get in touch with the ECC today, and let's make your UK study dream a reality. Fill out the contact form on our website today. Picture yourself learning in a country where history, culture, and innovation intertwine. Make a move to the United Kingdom. Home to four of the top 10 universities in the world, the UK offers an unparalleled educational experience. The UK is also a gateway to exciting job opportunities, with many graduates going on to work for top global companies. And it's not just about the books. With a diverse student population from over 200 different countries, you'll be part of a vibrant community. But we understand, studying abroad is a big decision. It's exciting, but it can also be daunting. That's where AECC comes in. We're here to guide you through every step of your journey. From choosing the right course and university, to visa processing and pre-departure guidance, we offer end-to-end -end services, all for free. So, are you ready to take the leap? Get in touch with the ECC today, and let's make your UK study dream a reality. Fill out the contact form on our website today. Hi, everyone. Okay, hello, good afternoon from Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, thank you everyone for joining this session. Um, today, um, I will be your host. My name is Winda and I am one of the counselors here at ACC Indonesia. And on today's session, I am not alone. I will be accompanied by Mas from the University of Bradford. And of course, for those who has been waiting for um, the incredible session, we will also have Professor Eva Kipnis with us who will uh, introduce us about uh, the international business strategy and marketing. But first, before we um, join, uh, we begin the interactive session, I think it will be um, interesting if we get to know the university first, because University of Bradford is one of our respectable um, university partners located in the UK. So just in case you wanted to pursue your study here. Um, I will have Mass to introduce uh, the University of Bradford to you guys so that you can know what is the University of Bradford and what is so special and what can you gain from the University of Bradford. Mass, the time is yours. All right. Hi, everybody. Sorry, Vinda. Just give me about two minutes while I set everything up and then I'll quickly join. Okay. I'll just uh, share my screen and all of these things. Just give me a minute. Okay. No worries. All right, um, as Mas is still preparing, uh, I would like to apologize first for the inconvenience. So guys, um, karena ini masih sepertinya ada kesalahan teknis, mohon ditunggu sebentar. Tapi kalau misalnya teman-teman ada nih, temannya yang pengen join lagi, apalagi pengen tahu uh, mengenai international business, strategy, and marketing, bisa banget ajakin teman-temannya yang lain untuk join session ini. Dan tentu saja di akhir session ini nanti kita akan ada Q&A session. Um, jadi kalau misalnya ada pertanyaan bisa di drop di chat box atau di Q&A itu juga bisa. Uh, apakah pertanyaannya harus seputar topik yang dibahas hari ini yaitu international business, strategy, and marketing. Um, we expect so, tapi kalau misalnya ternyata kalian kepo nih soal University of Bradford, please feel free untuk tanya juga ke kita. Um, kalau boleh tahu, ini pesertanya 
emang ada background di international business strategy and marketing apa gimana nih? Boleh dong um, info-info dikit di chat box. Jadi kita tahu nih um, sertanya tuh siapa aja sih gitu dan dari field apa aja atau memang kalian uh, pengen tahu atau gimana sih gitu apa nih yang pengen banget diketahui melalui session ini. No one? Okay, I think lagi pada mempersiapkan diri kali ya. Okay, kalau gitu, while waiting for mas, I think I will introduce AECC first. So guys, uh, if this is your first event with uh, AECC, we are actually a study abroad consultant representing more than um, 750 plus universities all around the world, including in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, America, Canada, and many other countries. Okay, now I think um, has his slides ready. Hi, everybody. Sorry for the oh. delay. Are you able to see my screen? Okay, no worries. Yes, I can see your screen. Perfect, perfect. Can we begin now? Yes. So hello, good afternoon everybody from Indonesia. My name is Maz. I'm a conversion officer at the University of Bradford. Um, I support students in helping them um, study in the UK with any questions they have. Um, what I will do today is take you through uh, with details about the University of Bradford, uh, about important information that is essential for you to know when you think of studying abroad. Um, and any questions you have, feel free to drop in uh, your questions in the chat box and I'll be taking the questions across or through the session or at the end of the session. So firstly, I know a lot of you, um, whenever you think of the UK, you probably know the main cities like London, Leeds, Manchester, Edinburgh and Birmingham. Uh, well, Bradford is a city in the UK like another as well. We are located in the heart of the UK. So we are very well connected to different parts of the UK. So as you can see, we're very well connected to London, Leeds, Manchester, Edinburgh, Birmingham, and we're about to be about three hours away in terms of the timings. Uh, we have our own international airport as well, which is Leeds Bradford International Airport. Uh, we also have a Manchester airport, uh, which is very well connected internationally for all the flights that you can think of. So uh, in terms of the location, we are um, very well uh, connected to different parts of the UK. Now, uh, Bradford is known to be the city of culture for 2025. And this is a huge advantage and benefit for all international students looking to study at the university because having the term city of culture means we have a lot of culture, we have a lot of heritage, we still have a lot of city life with students and experience. If you move to let's say about 20 minutes away from the city, you then get to experience uh, the beautiful countryside. Now, what is in, in you that uh, benefits in terms of the title city of culture? Now, with this comes a lot of job openings in the city. So there's estimated to be about 6,000 new jobs in the city by next year. So this is a huge advantage for students joining Bradford because they do have a lot of employment opportunities in the city as well. Now, there's many reasons uh, why students choose to study at Bradford and I'm going to take you through with all of these one by one. Number one, we are a very multicultural university. So we are a global bridge of about 130 different nationalities at the university. So we've got more than, so when you come to the UK, you obviously need to understand uh, how different people live in the UK, how it is that people, um, and this is one of the essential soft skills that you'll be having at the university as well. So, uh, and we're the first in the England for impact of social mobility. So we have a lot of people from different parts of the UK coming to Bradford for research purposes, uh, for job purposes, it's one of the top cities to live in for all international and domestic students as well. Uh, we've been awarded the Queen's anniversary prizes for higher and further education previously as well two times. 
We're the first in the world for cardiovascular probability. Now, when I say first in the world for cardiovascular probability, 94% of our students receive jobs in the first six months after graduation. That's the kind of support we offer to students in terms of employability. Now, we're one of the elite business schools across the world to achieve a triple crown accreditation. Now, what does triple crown accreditation mean is that uh, we have got various different accreditations attached to the university like Equus, AMB, and NAACSB. Only 1% of universities from around the world hold this kind of accreditation, all right? Now, just to get through with a bit of understanding of uh, what does triple crown mean? So when you have a degree, which is triple crown accredited, your employability level in the industry automatically rises. You do have a lot of employment prospects once you have a degree that is from this kind of accreditation. And not just this, all the business programs have this accreditation. And along with that, let's say you're applying for a marketing program then our marketing programs have a Chartered Institute of Marketing accreditation as well, CIM. Our accounting program have an ACCA accreditation at the university. So different programs have different accreditations at the university uh, for students to join. Now, um, again, we are one of the oldest universities at the university as well. Now, when we say oldest accreditation, we have uh, established ourselves in the year 1832. So when we say that, um, we actually started off as an engineering school and then expanded into different fields like business, nursing, uh, social, uh, law degrees and things like that. Our first chancellor of the university was actually Prime Minister Harold Wilson at the university. Now, uh, one of the major reasons why uh, Bradford as a location is very interactive and attractive for international students is because uh, we're the top three in the UK for satisfaction with accommodation, cost, living, cost, and value for money. When I say accommodation, cost, living, cost, and value for money, it means that uh, we have our own uh, the affordability factor. So whenever international students do decide to live in the city, they get an opportunity to access affordable living in the city. So our, accom afford, uh, our accommodation costs, our living costs are about 50% lesser compared to the rest of the UK. Now, moving on to some statistics and campus life. Now, um, I know a lot of you, whenever you look to join a university, you, look, you, you imagine a beautiful and amazing campus life. We do have everything you can think of. All your hobbies are incorporated within your university experience. So our sports center includes swimming pool, gym, climbing wall, team sports facilities, and this costs only about £100 per year. We've got about 30 different sports clubs at the university, student central library and student union, cafes, bars, social spaces for you to chill around while you study at the university. And we have over 70 different societies at the university for all the hobbies. And the exciting part about this is that all of these are student led. When I say all of these are student led, student unions take a leadership of the social clubs. So uh, you do get that leadership skills and opportunity to kind of add that in your CV once you graduate from the university as well. For, all, for, those, for those highly demanded uh, kind of uh, hobbies, we've got different centers as well. As you can see, for the music club, we've got the music center at the university. We've got theater club for the people interested in performing arts at the university as well. So um, the exciting thing about living in Bradford is that we've got a city center campus. So what it means by is that uh, everything is quite convenient and accessible at the university. So uh, different parts of the city, let's say the garden, the social spaces, your music center, your accommodation, everything is located within the heart of the city as well. Um, secondly, in terms of the university, uh, we have also got uh, a city center. So as you can see, the downside of the line, which is the train network, this is actually connecting to different parts of the UK, as I mentioned earlier. So this is how the city looks like, and this is how the kind of campus life is located to be. Now, as I said, we're one of the most affordable living environments in the heart of the UK. So we've got spacious townhouses, ensuite apartments, uh, about 80 to 128 pounds per week, which compared to the rest of the UK is quite affordable. 
you're easily able to make up that money by working part-time in the UK as well. So you can work about 20 hours a week in the city. There's guaranteed availability for all international students, single sex accommodation available. And this includes Wi-Fi, personal belongings, everything within the university itself. Now, when we come to the student support services, We've got person tutors, counseling. One of the very exciting things that I appreciate about the university is the free language center support. What is free language center support means is that uh, all international students have an opportunity of learning an international language free of cost in an academic year. And that's the advantage students have when they study at the university. Just give me one minute. Next is um, the graduate in poverty. As I said, 94% of our students receive jobs in the first six months after graduation. And this is through the diverse networks and links universities have with local, regional, and national businesses across the global economy. So we've got a lot of graduates who are currently 147,000 graduates across the world currently studying, which gives students an opportunity to kind of access the resources they bring to the university as well. Moving on to the graduate destination. So I'm sure all of us at least know one company from here, Emirates, KPMG, Morrison, and these are the country companies our graduates are currently working in, and you would have access to these as well when you're joining at the university. Moving on, these are the different faculties that we offer at the universities. We've got engineering and digital technologies, health studies, life sciences, management, law, and social science. Now, I would highly encourage each and every one of you to kind of go through the website in detail for the course that you're interested in, because the website is a complete encyclopedia for all the information you need about the program, course, tuition fee, um, and again, if you have any further questions specifically to the program, you can always reach out to us. We're more than happy to make you through with that as well. Bombs are um, still falling on children in Ukraine. I've been there and I've seen for myself how the... Hi, I think we've got Professor Eva join us as well. Um, I'll just quickly finish off with the entry requirements and then Professor Eva can take you through with uh, the master class as well. So um, at the entry requirements, we've got the foundation program, undergraduate program, and postgraduate programs. We've got Ijaza, diploma, and bachelor's degree. Uh, at the foundation level, you, if you complete Ijaza, which is SMA and MA, you get to join the foundation program directly. If you complete your diploma, which is D1, you go into year one uh, entry directly. And again, depending on the grades you've achieved, you get into different uh, qualifications and programs based on that. Uh, if you complete your bachelor's degree, which is Sarjana 1, then you can also join the postgraduate programs directly as well. We do accept cap years, backlogs, correspondence degrees, and only take bachelor's and credit transfers at the university as well. Uh, feel free to reach out to AACC for the guidance you need in terms of the application process. They are well versed with the process and they will be supporting you in country in terms of these procedures. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us directly as well. And we're more than happy to, to take you through with all of the processes. Now, I'd just like to introduce Professor Eva, who will be taking you through the master class as well. Thank you so much, everybody. Any questions, let me know in the chat box, and I'm more than happy to take you through with that. All right. Thank you so much, Mars, for introducing the University of Bradford uh, for all of us. Now, uh, the most uh, awaited session uh, is here. Professor Eva has joined us. Hey, Professor Eva, thank you for joining us. Good okay, morning so or good afternoon, depending <laughs> on the, the world you're in. Yeah, I know. It's good afternoon here in Indonesia. What time is it in your place, Professor? Uh, it's just gone 8 a.m. Ah, I see. It's still morning. It's mm -hmm. um, all 3 uh, three past twenty here in Jakarta, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's almost seven seven hours difference. Well, you are further ahead in your day than I am. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, Professor. I think uh they have been 
very eager to know about international business strategy and marketing. I think um, it will be better if I give the time for you so you can begin your um, explanation about this very interesting topic. The time is Thank yours. You. Yes, please let me share my screen. And start presenting. Is all this working? Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Wonderful. Okay, so uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for being here and thank you for coming uh, along to listen to me. Uh, my name is Eva Kipnis. I am professor in marketing at the University of Bradford School of Management. And I'm delighted to be here to talk to you about the international business strategy and marketing. And particularly, we will be talking about the development of global brands in a diverse society. So, Let's begin with a question. When should an organization <clears throat> think about social cultural diversity? And some may say, well, an organization should start thinking about diversity when it goes um, out into international markets. I hope and I challenge you to come along with me on this journey that we will establish that actually this statement is incorrect and organizations need to start thinking about social cultural diversity from their very establishment. There are several reasons to my argument. First of all, uh, despite assumptions that post COVID internationalization will slow down, it's actually growing. And as we can see, We've recovered pretty quickly post-COVID and the trend is on the rise. This is the data from 2022. But beyond this, actually many societies nowadays and many countries are diverse within them. Uh, there are multi-racial and multi-ethnic societies multi-religion societies, multilingual societies. I know that Indonesia is one of these uh, societies' examples, but there are a few others. And you can see that actually mixed ethnic or mixed race marriages um, are quite prevalent and prominent in Brazil, for example, and in other countries in the world, um, by or multiracial or ethnic people are the fastest growing population segment. So not only diversity exists within countries, but we also coexist and live together. You can also see the example of two thirds of the world's children growing up in mixed ethnic and multilingual environments. So we need to realize that we diversity is all around us and we live within it. There is also a very significant economic reason to keep diversity in focus throughout. As you can see from this statistics, some of the cultural groups that typically, previously, traditionally, were less um, of importance to organizations constitute very important and significant markets. Just have a look at the five trillion dollars purchasing power of people uh, over 60 in Europe. Um, four and a half billion pounds is the purchasing power of multi-ethnic people in the UK. And you can also see that thinking about diversity and reflecting this diversity in organizational composition in how organization develops its marketing strategy and branding strategy produces better returns and better results for organizations. You can see the excellent performance of organizations um, in terms of profitability 
at the very top. There are also policymaker and other stakeholder expectations that make it important for organizations to think about diversity. We all know the UN Sustainability Development Goals and um, at the University of Bradford, a lot of our teaching is focused around these goals and supporting the societies to um, drive towards these goals. In the wider uh, stakeholder audiences, these goals are fostering the growing emphasis on expectations of CSR and ethics of business, ethical business, sustainable business. We can also see that among consumers, so among people like you, me, and anybody in this room and beyond, uh, there is a growing expectations to brands to act beyond the business they're in. So Edelman is one of the world leading uh, market research organizations who on annual basis conduct um, a brand trust barometer and they establish factors that are important in how consumers view brands. And as you can see, that the data from 14 countries, Western, non-Western, develop, developing across the world, indicates that overall 86% of consumers in these countries expect brands to take one or more actions that are beyond their product and business. And looking at the particular actions, we can see that majority of the expectations focus on making a positive change in the society. So ultimately, the conclusion is that accounting for social cultural diversity is key both internationally and internationally within a country. To understand diversity, we need to understand the concept of culture. And while I'm here talking about it, uh, I also need to say to you that this is one of the most complex concepts um, that researchers uh, have consistently named to be the most complex uh, in uh, the entire social sciences. But I'm here to break it down, hopefully simply, um, in a nutshell, culture is a constellation of values and beliefs that people hold, communication styles uh, and communication forms, as well as various material artifacts and traditions that are associated with it. And I'm sure that looking at some of these images, you already have some of the cultural associations, uh, for example, with Mickey Mouse, and Mickey Mouse is associated with uh, American culture, and pizza uh, would uh, immediately evoke association with Italian culture and the pyramids is evoking associations with Egypt uh, and I'm sure that if I point out the writing of dignity you will also have some cultural associations as well. So how does this play out in marketing? How does culture play out in marketing? Well for example, let's look at beliefs. Beliefs are our mental and verbal processes that showcase our knowledge and assessment of how we live. So how do we understand the world? This can relate to gender roles, that can relate to social roles, this can relate to social organizations or something else that we might want to think about. And I want to try and play this little video. Um, I'm not sure that it will work. Um, so I'm going to start playing it. And if possible, could I please ask Window or Maz to let me know if the sound is on? Sure. Okay. Sure. What did trees mean to you? <laughs> Yes, I can hear it. Nature. Sorry? Uh, I can hear it, but I think you can maximize the volume. Yeah, I think you just need to maximize the volume a bit. 
Okay, it's on maximum, I'm afraid. Um, okay. Well, it's a short one, so let's try and play it, and then we will. I will try and play another video in YouTube itself. Okay. okay. Fertility. Oxygen. Give us a safe paper with our new green. Our bank account options. And HSBC will give five pounds to environmental charities. Okay, so hopefully you heard some of it. And ultimately, what this video is illustrating is that even as simple as meaning as tree may mean different things in different parts of the world, in different cultural beliefs, and so on. We also can think about how incorrect understanding of cultural beliefs might lead organizations to really lose their brand value. And there we consistently see different types of problems and scandals that organizations can get themselves into without understanding how to portray culture of another country um, accurately. Another example, the understanding of color and appearance, dress style, again has direct implication for marketing. So for example, as you can see in the examples uh, with Nestle, the purple color is a uh, packaging from the UK where color purple is associated with royalty and therefore, uh, marketing something of color purple evokes these associations. Whereas Nestle Noir, which is a French packaging, is um, of color black, and black color is associated with France with sophistication and fashion. So again, marketing with color and understanding the meanings of color can bring organizations to greater market visibility. Both images of the sportswear are by Nike, and you can see how Nike has um, addressed and accommodated for different religious beliefs and also cultural traditions uh, in reflecting the colors and patterns of the African culture in um, some of its uh, clothing. Language. Language is another important and very significant um, instrument of marketing that we also need to understand very well. Language is not just about the spoken words. It's also about how uh, formal the language is, um, what language to use. Many countries are multilingual. Think about, for example, Canada. Canada has two official languages. This has important implications for packaging. Uh, this has important implications for advertising we develop. And beyond that, of course, there are dialects. We can see in India, there are 22 major languages and over 700 dialects. So how do we as marketeers deal with it? And even in English, which traditionally is thought as um, a language of international communication, there are differences and two people may be speaking in English and yet different words mean the same. Have a look at these examples between British uh, English and the US English. And you can see that petrol is gasoline and biscuits are cookies, and crisps are chips, but chips are fries. And on it goes and on it goes. So again, in marketing, we study culture to understand these different nuances. Beyond written language and spoken language, there is also silent language. And that involves greetings, gestures, how we understand body language, how we express ourselves via body language. So all these are important nuances to consider. Um, beyond that, we also hold 
different associations to various countries and cultures in our minds. And if I could ask um, to post responses to these questions. So let's go with two questions. Which, which culture is leading in fashion and style? If you could quickly post your responses to this question. Come on, everyone. Don't be shy. Okay, so we see best country for cricket, India. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, how about the question uh, on cars? Which country makes best cars? Culture leading in fashion, London. Okay, thank you. One more. Great, thank you. Best cars, Germany and Japan. Best cars, US. Okay, thank you very much for these responses. My question is, how do we know this? Did we really go around all the cultures and countries comparing the best fashion or best cars or assessing their cricket capabilities? No, we hold our associations in our minds based on our previous experiences and also knowledge from other people. OK, so these associations are held deeply in our minds um, and can impact how we assess marketing communications. So let's have a look at this. We can see old El Paso and we can see that there are color inferences to a Mexican uh, type kind of culture because it's red and yellow. There is also imagery that represents this typical Mexican landscape of cacti and hills that we all have grown to see. And of course, there is brand name itself that is sending us these associations. Have a look at Bertoli. Um, hopefully you are by now spotting that the uh, packaging is in colors of the Italian flag, white, red, and green. The brand name itself is also sending the associations to the Italian culture. So again, these associations are very deep. They're subconscious and subconsciously held in our brain, and yet they directly make inferences and help us to interpret the signals of brands to think about what culture or country we associate the brands with. And why is this important? Well, this is a quote by a very famous um, American professor, Jan Benedict Steenkamp, with whom I had the honor of collaborating and learning from. And he uh, talks about how in the world where commoditization, so where um, everybody's capabilities are the same and where uh, something that is unique to you as you know how can become common uh, across the world. So again, think about, for example, something like a smartphone. Uh, the, the, the concept of smartphone is now a commodity. And yet there are some brands that make difference uh, in how their smartphones are thought about. There is Apple, there is Samsung, there's Huawei. Um, but actually, if we just look at their phone like this, we probably cannot tell the difference. So linking a brand to a particular type of culture is an important way of differentiating your brand and standing out in the market, uh, associating with particular cultural capabilities and characteristics that are positive in the minds of consumers. Addressing diversity is not easy because the key challenge that we have 
is that we need to balance brand stability with adaptation to different cultures. When it is done well, it broadens brands' connections with different audiences. And at this point, I wanted to illustrate to you with three little videos, um, perhaps Could I stop sharing for a moment, uh, adjusting the video settings? So let's try. I'm going to share my screen and play this video. Okay, how was that? When do any better? Sorry. Was this any better sound wise? Um, well, not really actually for the um, sound, but we can see the video and I can hear like um some short uh some sort okay. of songs. Okay. So we don't need the sound as much here. What we need to focus on is the imagery. So let's watch this uh two uh, videos and then we will very quickly talk about the difference so no! Okay, and last one. Ashidhakari 
Okay, so we have seen that the product and the brand is the same. And yet, these three videos were showcasing different cultures and the product incorporated and brand incorporated and accommodating for these three different cultures and different celebrations, cultural celebrations. So the first one was Christmas. The second was Chinese New Year. Yeah. And the third was Eid, right? And um, hopefully you could see that the writing was also saying Eid Mubarak. So this brand had very competently balanced moving across different cultures and adapting to these different cultural traditions and yet being recognizable across these cultures because it can be quite difficult. So because we're having difficulties with sound, we are going to skip to this slide. Ultimately, another important aspect that we in the University of Bradford paid pay great attention to is inclusion and, and social inclusion in diverse society. The stakeholders and consumers now expect more sustainability and also inclusivity among their brands. And again, you can see that this is almost a universal expectation across the world. You can see that there is China and India, as well as US, UK and Germany, where consumers hold expectations to brands that are more sustainable and more inclusive. Thinking about inclusion actually enables organizations to innovate and also think about their offerings in an innovative manner. Let's have a look at different cases of diversity and inclusion addressed across marketing mix. Of course, I, may, I, I, I assume you might not know what marketing mix is. So in a very brief explanation, developing and promoting different offerings that meet consumer needs is a core component for organizations. And the marketing mix is a set of elements and activities for satisfying these needs. So marketing mix has been broken down into seven Ps, uh, seven elements, which is product, price, place, promotion, people, process, and physical evidence. So when we think about physical evidence, for example, um, when you go to a restaurant, the atmosphere in the restaurant, the decoration of the restaurant, the interior, how the server is, etc. All this is the physical evidence of your experience. How you are being served, uh, is it a fast food restaurant or a sit-down restaurant, is an example of process. Um, and hopefully other elements of marketing mix are more self-explanatory and I will also illustrate with different examples. So Lego have introduced um, lab sets with female scientists by thinking about diversity. They received a letter from a girl consumer who said, why cannot I be a scientist why don't you have sets that show me as a scientist and lego said well actually yeah why don't we uh, and they have now designed 
sets that represent uh, female scientists as well. Um, IKEA have uh, developed this wonderful innovation <clears throat> for children uh, and people with limited mobility. Um, and uh, these innovations are now becoming very, very um, widely uh, utilized. Um, medical um, uh, manufacturers have identified the need for different colored uh, plasters, medical plasters, to fit with different skin tones. Um, when we think about place, uh, this mannequin, as you see, is showcasing um, clothing on a model that uh, has one prosthetic limb. And again, it is doing so to uh, cater for consumers with disabilities and also um, uh, accommodate for them. Morrison's, which is a big UK supermarket chain and also actually uh, it was originated in Bradford, uh, has announced a quiet hour to help people with sensory impairments. So for example, when the people are very sensitive to loud sounds, uh, they can now sh shop in a quiet hour uh, to for a better experience. And then we can think also about promotion. So Emirates, a big airline that we all know, you can see how they are connecting to different cultures by thinking about share a smile in 120 languages. Um, they are showcasing people of different ages, different genders, different ethnic backgrounds, different religious backgrounds. Um, and all these are cultural signals that are incorporated into their marketing activity. And then finally, I want to talk to you about process, which showcases, for example, a, a UK-based uh, initiative by Barclays that have identified the need around older consumers to develop skills for digital banking. And they have developed an offer, a specific offer uh, called Digital Eagles, who come out into the homes of people to help them understand how to bank digitally. On that note, I'm going to stop talking and maybe take some questions if there are any. Thank you so much for the fruitful information, the insightful um, session, Professor Iba. Um, I think it's very fascinating knowing that um, we can actually use culture um, and also sociocultural issue and include uh, the inclusion in our marketing strategies um, to grasp more audience and so that we can um, build our brand um, in a more positive way and reach a broader audience. Um, thank you so much once again. And I think we already have questions from um, some of the attendees. Mm -hmm. So the first one is from uh, Sophia Nirahmawati. Uh, she asked, hi, Professor Eva. I would like to ask how long that we do take a research for knowing the differentiation from each market if we handle several brands from one company as an agency? Ah. Huh. That's a really good question. I suppose it's not the question of how long, but how how you can make it more streamlined, right? So if you if you're handling multiple brands, but you look at one country market, you can of course find some, if you like, economies of scale because um, the country's macro environment, so political situation, economic situation, cultural situation, um, as long as you conduct a comprehensive analysis of it, it would apply to, to the majority of the brands that you're handling. However, there may be differences in, um, uh, if you like, depending on the industry your brand is in. So, for example, some culture, country associations can be industry specific. So think about the questions I was asking you about which uh, which country is, be is making best cars, right? Um, so I would say 
conduct your macro environment analysis once and fully comprehensively, but then adjust it for consumer trends industry by industry. I hope this makes sense, but feel free to also uh, ask me an additional question on this. Thank you so much, Professor Eva. Uh, and for Sophia Miranawati, uh, if you still uh, have further questions regarding to this, please kindly of type your questions in the uh, Q&A or in the chat box. And as uh, the second question comes from Hesti or Hetias, one of the brand strategy approaches is to make something relatable. How can we make it relatable when we are faced with a lot of diversity? Oh, I think this is very interesting. <laughs> this is an excellent question. Um, so some of the research that a colleague of mine has done um, looked at how multi-ethnic audiences perceive um, brands in terms of their relatability when they themselves are represented in brand communications and not. And what they have found was that actually it's not about whether a brand represents all the cultures, because of course it's difficult. There are so many of us with different cultural characteristics. So we cannot really incorporate everybody into every single advert. But what consumers pay more attention to is, is this brand being inclusive? Is it representing diversity? Okay, it doesn't represent me currently, but is it representing diversity generally? And is it, uh, if you like, uh, across the board, making an effort to represent diverse populations? So the brand is relatable because of its inclusivity. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight uh, that when the brands, um, if you like, adopt inclusivity agenda. Um, it's, it's a process to which they need to build. But ultimately, it is about thinking about diversity and showing it and respecting diversity. Thank you, Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, for Hesti, if you, uh, I hope this answers your question, but if you have further questions um, to ask to Professor Eva, please kindly type your questions in the Q&A or in the chat box. Okay, Professor, I think I have a question for you. So in regards of culture, we know uh, in every culture, there are something that is considered sacred or very important to that culture. But um, probably we did uh, research, but missed that sacred part or something. Um, how do we actually make our advertisement or our marketing strategies uh, touch the cultural part of some ethnicity or probably a country without um, making them feel offended or something like that. Because sometimes we only research on the surface, but not really knowing the details of the culture itself. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Um, so I would say that this is uh, about ensuring that we test and we conduct tests in depth. Um, many leading marketing organizations are now developing, um, uh, if you like, um, test groups where they run a new marketing collateral or a new marketing content by people with different cultural backgrounds to make sure that they don't commit um, a, a full path unintendedly um, indeed the more cultures we communicate with the more we need to know and um, drawing on the knowledge of uh, our employees may be an uh, an important asset so having diverse wor workforce can be an answer to this challenge because your workforce can act as your, if you like, cultural testing uh, group. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, actually, uh, so the basically we just have to return to the first slide of your presentation that when, like when you ask when the uh, companies uh, have to think about the socio-cultural, it's actually from the very beginning, from the very mm -hmm. start. 
Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Professor, I think uh, we still have more questions from the uh, attendees, but they cannot type it. So I will um, ask it on behalf of the students. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of them asked, how can the success of a multicultural marketing campaign be accurately measured considering the potential for diverse responses and cultural bias in traditional metrics? <laughs> Ah, okay. So there's a lot of people working on this at the moment. I agree. Um, our current uh, or existing, many of our existing metrics are biased. Um, but <laughs> the good news is that there are new metrics being developed. So for example, there is a measure of sense of inclusion in retail spaces um, developed by um, a group of uh, American researchers. Um, there, are, there are measures uh, regarding the felt well-being in a multicultural market. There are measures of brand inclusivity uh, being developed. Um, you may or may not be able to find some of them because these are currently uh, undergoing academic review before they're being published. I've seen them presented at conferences before. So there's a lot of work going on, uh, but I completely agree there is uh, work that needs to be done. Um, the inclusion, the felt inclusion measure is out there. Um, so that can be uh, one measure to use for now. Okay, I see. Um, I hope this answered your question for uh, the attendees that asked this. And actually, uh, uh, the following attendees still have more questions. Uh, and the question is, how can a brand build trust and authenticity? city with diverse cultural groups considering potential differences in communication styles and values <laughs> wow okay um you know i actually took out the um communication style slide when i was preparing for this um <laughs> presentation i should have kept it okay <clears throat> again rotating um, the collateral and content in the collateral could be one option. Um, but then also finding the optimal um, position. There are, um, uh, if you like, approaches to minimize the impact of uh, culture, cultural context, um, which is communication styles uh, when developing um, advertisements, for example. <clears throat> so... For instance, the emphasis on images is one of these techniques um, rather than uh, text. Um, these images can convey a lot and then having very sleek and clean one line communications can deal with communication differences. However, the um, Second question about authenticity is a completely different one. Authenticity is difficult to achieve. Um, research shows that authenticity is linked to reputation. So organizations cannot achieve authenticity in overnight. You know, brands who... Uh, currently are perceived as brands um, that care and respect diversity have been working on it for a long time. So think about Dove, right? Um, it, it's years of campaigns that finally got them to a place where they are a brand that is perceived to authentically address diversity. Just sticking different models of different races or ethnicities into an advert is not going to cut it anymore. Consumers are skeptical. Consumers are wary of these, uh, if you like, shiny initiatives. Um, they want to see brands earn this reputation and also not only talk about it in advertising, but actually follow it through with actions as well. From 
probably sub, uh, subconsciously uh, we realize uh, that uh, social cultural market uh, such socio cultural aspect actually plays a part in the marketing sector but not many of us uh, is actually aware of the technique and of um, the importance of it but you give uh, you give us so many insights about uh, this specific topic and i would like to thank you for that for opening our eyes through this very fruitful session um i think all the questions has been answered and we're still waiting for more questions uh, if any but if we don't have any more questions um i think we can end this this session now and if you guys want to learn more about social cultural uh, marketing you can actually enroll yourself guys to the university of bradford because this, this is one of the example of the lessons that you will get by entering the university of bradford and you might probably meet professor eva in person and being taught by her and i hope this could open your eyes with uh all the possibilities that might happen if you wish to uh, pursue your study at the University of Bradford. Um, and the material of today's uh, presentation will be posted uh, on our social media um, and you can rewatch it again if you forget something or if you missed certain, pa uh, certain parts of the explanations. Okay, um, I think that's all from me. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Professor Eva, for your time, for your insights, and for answering all of our questions and curiosity. And, and thank you so much, uh, Mas, for introducing a University of Bradford uh, to all of us and for bringing Professor Eva uh, and bring this fruitful sessions uh, for all of us. Thank you for thank having you so me. much, everybody. Enjoy yeah. the rest thank of you so your day. Much. Bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Have a great Bye. day. Thank you, everyone. Picture yourself learning in a country where history, culture, and innovation intertwine. Make a move to the United Kingdom. Home to four of the top 10 universities in the world, the UK offers an unparalleled educational experience. The UK is also a gateway to exciting job opportunities, with many graduates going on to work for top global companies. And it's not just about the books. With a diverse student population from over 200 different countries, you'll be part of a vibrant community. But we understand, studying abroad is a big decision. It's exciting, but it can also be daunting. That's where AECC comes in. We're here to guide you through every step of your journey. From choosing the right course and university, to visa processing and pre-departure guidance, we offer end-to-end -end services, all for free. So, are you ready to take the leap? Get in touch with the ECC today, and let's make your UK study dream a reality. Fill out the contact form on our website today.